Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm Ryan in Singapore. Welcome to our mindfulness practice. We've been working on a series on the nine attitudes of mindfulness-based stress reduction. We are on attitude number seven. Uh, this is kind of the end of the conventional, conventional attitudes in that these are the attitudes that you find in full catastrophe living. The seventh attitude is letting go. And when John Kabat-Zinn put together the, the seven attitudes on, I think there are some videos about it, he added in two more, which are gratitude and generosity. So we'll, we'll get to those next week. But um, th this week, we'll be kind of closing out this, the, the core seven attitudes here with letting go. And uh, letting go is an interesting one in that I suppose all of the this, the nine attitudes the, or the, even the, the seven attitudes plus, plus two you find that they're all related to one another in some way and letting go is no different and as I look at letting go for some reason this one feels like it has more to do with the others than than maybe you know pick one of one of the other attitudes and that you know letting go is there's trust in letting go right and even you can even imagine someone you know I've, I've done the parable of the trapeze before right i mean you're holding on and you're, you're waiting to to get out to that next trapeze bar and to to get to that next one right it's just out of reach so you have to let go first and so there's a a kind of bravery that comes with letting go and uh, letting go can be letting go of ideas uh, long-standing ideas that we've had for ages that we think you know we're convinced that these ideas are right through and through uh, and beginner's mind reminds us that sometimes the best way to approach something is with the beginner's mind instead of uh, instead of the expert mind in the beginner's mind there are endless possibilities in the minds of the expert there is only one way so, um, you know, is it possible to let go of these, these ideas that we've had for so long? Um, and, you know, letting, letting go of the past. Is it possible for us to live in this moment and to not be caught up in what has happened in the past and to think that we still live there? Um, you know, that's one of my one of my mistakes in the in the past was living in the past was trying to remember and to, to remind everybody else who I was instead of who I am uh, and I think that's a, it's a really important one um, you know when we talked last time or yeah last time about grieving as well and that uh, grieving comes with and acceptance right and so that's so this is so acceptance falls in here as well and and after the acceptance comes the letting go like the, you know this part of my life is over now uh, is it possible to to let go and to start to move on so uh, letting go is really you know really really important part of our mindfulness practice as well and we can practice letting go every single time we meditate as we breathe in we have air inside of our bodies we have to let go to breathe out so let go of this breath that we have inside to exhale so this inhale is over there's no room for the next breath if we don't exhale this breath and letting go of the other the other one that you know so so that's perhaps more practical when you are focused on the breath to recognize that you have to let go of this inhalation. We have to exhale so that the next inhalation can come in. The other thing we have to do is that our minds, if you're like me, my meditation is, is almost never a peaceful one. That my mind is always going to the future and thinking about all the things that I need to do later or going to the past and rehashing things. And so one of, the, one of the things that we practice is letting go of this thought. So letting go of this thought. Uh, okay, this thought is here. Recognizing, accepting this thought is here. Okay, let go. 
focus back on the breath. So, and Johannes says, letting go can be painful. Letting go is often painful, for sure. Um, and it's something that we don't want to do because we like so much to cling to the things that we want to cling to. Now, um, now I'm going to read from Full Catastrophe Living. John Kabat-Zinn, the creator of mindfulness-based stress reduction, uh, what does he say about letting go? And I'll, I will preface as I look at this, of course, there's this story about monkeys in India. I, I, I don't know if I, I, I've read that this story isn't actually a real story, um, that it's just kind of an illustrative story. So I, I don't know if it's real or not, but I just want to say that. Um, I don't know, if, you know, um, don't, don't take this as literal. They say in India, there is a particular clever way of catching monkeys. As the story goes, hunters will cut a hole in a coconut that is just big enough for the monkey to put its hand through. Then they will drill two smaller holes in the other end and pass a wire through and secure the coconut to the base of a tree. They slip a banana inside the coconut. Um, and in fact, I've heard that it's actually rice, not a banana. They slip a banana inside the coconut through the hole. The monkey comes down, puts its hand in the hole, takes hold of the banana, the hole is cleverly crafted so that an open hand can go into the hole, but the fist cannot get out. All the monkey has to do to free itself is to let go of the banana, but it seems that most monkeys don't let go. Often our minds get us caught in very much in the same way in spite of all our intelligence. For this reason, cultivating the attitude of letting go or non-attachment is fundamental to the practice of mindfulness. When we start paying attention to our inner experience, we rapidly discover that there are certain thoughts, feelings, and situations that the mind seems to want to hold on to. If they are pleasant, we try to prolong these thoughts or feelings or situations, stretch them out, and conjure them up again and again. Similarly, there are many thoughts and feelings and experiences that we try to get rid of or prevent ourselves from having because they are unpleasant or painful or frightening in one way or another we want to protect ourselves from them in the meditation practice we intentionally put aside the tendency to elevate some aspects of our experience and reject others instead we let our experience be what it is and practice observing it from moment to moment letting go is a way of letting things be of accepting them as they are when we observe our mind grasping or pushing away, we remind ourselves to let go, to let go of those impulses on purpose, just to see what will happen if we do. When we find ourselves judging our experience, we let go of those judging thoughts. We recognize them and we just don't pursue them any further. We let them be, and in doing so, we let go. Similarly, when thoughts of the past or the future come up, we let go of them. We just watch, resting in awareness itself. If we find it particularly difficult to let go of something because it has such a strong hold over our mind, we can direct our attention to that holding on and what it feels like. Holding on or clinging is the opposite of letting go. We can become an expert in our own attachments whatever they may be and whatever their consequences in our lives, as well as how it feels in those moments when we finally do let go and what the consequences of that are. Being willing to look at the ways we hold on ultimately shows us a lot about the experience of its opposite. So whether we are successful at letting go or not, mindfulness continues to teach us if we are willing to look. Letting go is not such a foreign experience. We do it every night when we go to sleep. We lie down on a padded surface with the lights out in a quiet place, and we let go of our mind and our body. If you can't let go, you can't go to sleep. Most of us have experienced times when the mind just would not shut down when we got into bed. This is one of the first signs of elevated stress. At these times, we may be unable to free ourselves from certain thoughts because our involvement in them is just too powerful. If we try to force ourselves to sleep, it just makes things worse. So if you can go to sleep, you are already an expert in letting go. Now you just need to practice 
need to practice applying this skill in waking situations as well. Okay. Yeah, letting go of the way things were. You know, letting go of... You know, just, um, just reminded about health, you know? Health is like, like that time where you find out that you have high cholesterol and you need to change your diet or, you know, whatever. Or, or, you know, something has happened and you can't move the way that you used to be able to move. Let going, letting go of, of how things were and accepting how things are. It, does, it sounds so simple, Tina, because it is simple. Um, and I think that's, that's what's, um, you know, that's what can, can hold us back sometimes is our, um, well, you know, and it, it's, of course it sounds simple, but it's easier said than done, isn't it? Let's get into our practice. So I encourage you to sit comfortably. Feel free to move the head around. Roll the shoulders as we get started in practice today. Notice the fact that you're breathing. Feel the physical sensations that accompany breath. Tune in, allow those sensations to anchor your awareness in this moment. And if you've never really followed the feeling of breathing, you can place your left hand on your belly, your right hand on your chest. Just pay attention to these sensations. The abdomen expanding on the inhale, contracting on the exhale. So you can anchor there at the abdomen paying attention to all the details, how the body experiences the breath, how the body sends signals to you, letting you know that you're breathing, stretching of the abdominal wall as you breathe in. Contraction back as you breathe out. Or if, if it's more appropriate or more comfortable for you, you can feel the breath at the nostrils. Feel the air moving through the nostrils. But as for me today, I'll be following the breath at the abdomen and leading this meditation from its expansion and contraction of the abdomen with the breath. So concentrate your attention as best you can. Concentrate on these physical sensations because the way that we know that we're breathing, it's not a conceptual thing. There are actual physical signs. I can feel my t-shirt gently moving across my skin as my belly expands and contracts.
if the mind is tending to wander, can you be aware that that's happening? Can you accept that that's happening? Not trying to push away the wandering mind. Not resisting it. Just gently letting go of those thoughts. Anytime thoughts come up in your meditation practice, as best you can, releasing them, remembering what you're doing, focusing, focusing on the physical sensation of breath. So coming back, starting over. Yeah, I think it's funny sometimes how we kind of get caught up on how, how many minutes was I meditating? How many minutes was I focused on the breath just now? Oh, you know, the kind of... Uh, sadness we might feel when the progress is lost. And just remember, it doesn't matter. Now is now. Now is the beginning. And now is the beginning. And now is the beginning. This moment is all we have. This is the moment. Focus the attention on the breath. Don't get caught up in the past. As best you can, let go. Be present. Be here. Feel the breath. Feel that inhalation. Let go of the breath. Feel the exhalation. Inhaling. Followed by exhaling.
Keep it up, you're doing great. Just a few more minutes now. Remember, as best you can, focusing attention on this physical sensation of breath, noticing the belly rising and falling. After each breath comes in, we have no choice. We want to stay alive, but to let go. Let that breath come out. Make space for yet the next breath. Okay, it's about time to draw our practice to its close. I'll close our practice today with three rings to the bell. Right, how'd it go today? So thanks for practicing with me. Uh, feel free to write in uh, in our, our chat what happened. What was it like? Did you find your thoughts coming up? Was it hard to let go of your thoughts? Uh, if so, yeah, let's 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 talk about it. Um, and is there anything in your life that's going on right now that you're struggling to let go of? So feel free to chat, write in the chat whatever it is that, that's coming up for you today. And I just want to revisit. Sounds, you know, Tina says, sounds so simple. Um, you know, it, and, and, and it can be, right? Letting go can be, can be really simple. And I, and I think that, you know, the, the more we think about how hard it is, the harder it becomes, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, Dirk shares, like a mantra, in my practice, I use the words uh, lot, lot loss, which is letting go, by in-breath and out-breath. I feel the reaction of my body becoming calmer. Thanks, Dirk. And that's, um, yeah, I think that, that's, that's a good, you know, if you like to use, um, if you like to use uh, mantras, if you want to use some words that help you stay focused. And I think I have some series about 
pros and cons of using mantras that, that I've done in the past. So you, you can, if you're interested, you can look up my, the videos on that. Um, but yeah, one, one that I think a very useful one, um, just because this is, I, I, I do, I'm a secular practitioner. So one of the, you know, if you'd like to use a mantra, breathing in, I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. So while you're breathing in, you just say this to yourself in your mind. Um, and it can help keep, I, I just find that we, when we occupy the mind, it kind of blocks out other things that are going on. Um, and so, you know, is that the intent of your practice or, or not? Or do we have some other, some other kind of in, intention around our practice? So, and, and again, I, I use mantra, occasionally I'll use, I'll use some kind of, some kind of words, especially if I'm finding it difficult to concentrate and I'm getting frustrated. Um, but more often than not, I don't. And one of, and one of my reasons for not using any words is because those thoughts come. Um, and, and I'm not trying to push away my thoughts. And I think that's, that's uh, because I know what a wandering mind I have in my day-to-day -day life. And, I, and I'm, I intentionally want to use my practice to help keep myself from getting distracted. So, um, so, that, so that, you know, pros and cons. Um, but certainly, uh, certainly it can be helpful to use some kind of inner, inner monologue for yourself if you find that you're just getting so frustrated that or that you're getting really frustrated and you'd like to do it or you know like Dirk says it the, it just does it helps calm down the mind and so you know it can be very helpful thank you Eddie Lance says having trouble letting go of a friend I love thanks for sharing Lance thanks CC for your donation letting go of resistance you know and that's that's it and I guess that's that's why I even brought up this thinking this this thing about not using mantras because I'm thinking because I'm welcoming instead of resisting my thoughts um, which is which is hard <laughs> which is hard because my mind never my mind never stops you know I always have something to think about Sybil says, my mind goes silent. No thoughts. Just sounds around me. I say nothing to my quiet mind. Thanks, Sybil, for sharing. Nadine says, breathing in, I'm aware of my in-breath. This helps me get back to the flow when my thoughts go wild. Thanks, Nadine. And that's another thing. Another thing that can help, too, when your thoughts go wild, is to intentionally elongate the breath. So... Mindfulness practice is letting the breath be as it is and letting go of control of the breath. And sometimes when we find that our, our minds are really all over the place, one of the things that we can do is to take control of the breath momentarily and, uh, and use that to help calm the mind. Micah says, I was very distracted thinking about a friendship that ended and I've been trying to let go of the pain and dwelling on it when it's not in my power to change. So distracted by being on topic. Well, you know, as it is, right? These, uh, these, these topics, these topics do uh, stoke thoughts. Maybe I should start these sessions without any talking and start with the meditation and do the talking at the end. But, um, but yeah, you know what? It's good. It's a good reminder, sometimes, to to look at the challenges of our lives, and then make that challenge. That challenge can be, you know, the mind. Micah, this is just the way that your mind was today, right? And uh, is it possible to accept accept that that's that's what our my practice was? You know, that that was my practice today. Tina, uh, beautiful session. Letting go is a simple idea, but my ego and trauma complicate it. I believe it's a practice I must repeat, much like meditation. Yeah, 
And I guess that's the joy of practicing mindfulness of breathing is that we get to practice the, the simplest way of letting go every single time we breathe. And I think that's, and that's why we practice. We practice in a controlled environment that's quieter, that we don't, we don't move, we, we keep things under control so that we can have a, a simpler set of circumstances to practice each of these different skills. So letting go, breathing in, and then letting go, breathing out. Thanks for sharing, Tina. Thanks for your donation as well. And then if other Jean shares another distraction, sometimes we have, you know, new things, new sounds that bring us out of our practice, um, new other present moment things when we're trying our best to focus. Johanna says, life feels painful right now. I am mindful that emotional pain comes up. Maybe the pain is a result of my attachment, but if I let go, maybe I'm also just stuck with the pain. Hmm. Well, you know that this is. I mean, this this is the the concept of the fact that everything's changing, right? Um, just know that things are constantly changing, including the sensations that we have, um, and and attitude. The attitude of this. This thing that I'm going to experience is going to last forever is a common attitude. And it's very easy to be stuck in that attitude. And, and then when you're on the other side of the attitude, right? You look back and you go, oh, that's funny. That's really funny that I thought that this was going to last forever. Um, and I think this, you know, letting go of the most recent past is part of our practice as well. Like that this breath is over. No, I've just finished talking, so that's my exhale. And now I'm on to my next inhale. You know, and, and that's that's it. And and I think that's something that that as MBSR was developed, one of the you know, it wasn't that pain, physical pain was going away for a lot of the participants, but instead that this relationship to pain was changing. That I go that well. What is this that I'm experiencing? Uh, is it pain? And is and, you know my attitude of this sucks. This is terrible, right? Pain is pain is a part of life. Suffering is optional. And so, is it possible to to recognize that and to go, hey, the pain is here. Like this is the pain's here right now, and and that's that's what this moment is. This moment has pain within it, whether it be physical pain or emotional pain. Um, healing is something that takes time. Thanks so much, Johannes, for sharing. Micah says, but I have had a positive experience of the benefit of practice last night. I was at a two-hour yoga class, and there was a nearby alarm going off the whole time. I heard the sound, but didn't attach any feeling to the sound, and it didn't bother or distract me throughout the class. And, you know, and I guess just now is the time for me to say and if it did bother you and if it did distract you can you be accepting of that and go this, this is just what what I am now I'm not perfect my my practice isn't perfect you know maybe I was able to to not be bothered by that alarm yesterday but today is a different day and now I'm bothered by that alarm and can I non-judgmentally accept that this is the case and let go of this moment and maybe the next moment that pain that annoyance goes away this too shall pass all right lots of love to everybody out here today thanks for joining this practice it's been uh, been my pleasure um love talking about the nine attitudes and MBSR in general. MBSR has been so helpful for me in my life. And I uh, just want to, as we do, you know, as part of mindfulness practice, cultivation of compassion. 
So at the end of each practice, sending our well wishes to ourselves, to everybody here who's practicing with you today, and also to everyone in the world. So let's do that. Repeat out loud if you like after me, or you can repeat in your mind, or you can not participate if you choose not to. May I be happy and peaceful. May everyone watching, listening, wherever you are, I wish you all happiness and peace. And may all sentient life throughout the universe, including animals, may we all, may all we be happy and peaceful. All right. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> see you, see you next time. I'll be back on a Tuesday. Tuesday morning, talk about uh, gratitude. So uh, Tuesday morning, my time, which might be Monday night for you. See you then. Bye-bye.